And hello and welcome everyone to the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet and Matt and myself as you can probably tell are coming to you live a whole day early than usual for no specific reason. No, no real specific reason. Yeah, just just because. Uh, again, you know, I want to thank everyone for joining us on such short notice. Although we tried to make it not so much uh, short notice, we got we got all the regulars here in the chat. We got Jersey Luck, we got Chack, we got Lude Skeletor, uh, Michaelis, or I think I always think I say your name wrong. But again, we got Jaden. We got everyone, and I think we're gonna have a good show. We're gonna talk about the crisis. We're gonna talk about some of the news that broke this week, which there actually ended up being quite a bit of news to break this week. A solicitations came out. Yeah, surprising solicitations. Mm, but before we get to that, as always, I gotta ask Matt, how was your week? Pretty good. Like last week, I saw a bunch of new movies uh, that I've been looking forward to seeing quite some time now. I saw um, uh, 1917, which was... Oh yeah, that war movie that's all one shot and shot. Yeah, adds one shot, but it's trickery. There's cuts in there, and I know exactly yeah. where all the cuts are. Um but yeah, no, exactly. rarely ever is a movie like that ever one shot. But but it does a really good job of like putting it together to make it look like one shot. It it was really damn good film. I really enjoyed it. That's good. That's good. Uh, what else did you see? Uh, I saw the new Bad Boys. Oh yeah, how was that? I'm actually <laughs> hearing good things. Yeah, surprisingly, it was fucking awesome. It was dark. It was funny. Mm. It, it it did it. I wouldn't see none before. I want to see number four now. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, that that rarely ever happens with action movies. When is the third one actually any good, and when is it so good it makes you want to see another one? Well, not only that, when the first trailer came out, I was like, oh, no, this is coming out in January. It's directed by two kind of no-name Belgium guys. It's got a bunch yeah. of... It's got, like, the... It's got, like, a cast that they're trying to pass the torch on to, like, young, new, mm -hmm. hip people. Doesn't do any of that. <laughs> doesn't do any of that it's actually really damn cool and the new characters are really cool as well that's good that's good i uh i spent most of my week uh not sleeping as <laughs> i tried to work on this friggin uh what is it uh friggin batman universe project and i also got chased out of my house for a little bit too because there was a gas leak <laughs> that was fun it wasn't in my unit though I'm happy to say it was in another unit, so I didn't brain my damage, everyone, and you don't got to worry. Luckily, I was back <laughs> Wednesday to work on more comics, which yeah, were light this week. You don't need brains to work on comics. Come on. <laughs> no, nah, man, I work on the internet. I think it's very clear everyone who works here has no brains. In fact, the less, the less the less brains you have, the more money you earn. It's better. You can feel no shame. Mm -hmm. Also, too, as I mentioned before, they can't pull a college humor and can't take my, my brain cells away from me <laughs> if they're already gone. <laughs> Man, did you did you see the video Dorkly put out? I guess Dorkly, uh, they make those little animated shorts that are, uh, I guess they were owned by college humor. They put out a little video today. It was animated like all their other videos, but it was so sad and yet so totally on point about making content for the internet and how shitty it is. I say check it out if you haven't. Yeah, I did see it. It was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> Man, so funny and so dark. And the final like stinger of that one was they're like, hey, and fuck Facebook because Facebook is the reason a lot of content <laughs> creators are in trouble right now because Facebook lied to a bunch of your favorite YouTubers and said, look, you got to start posting your videos videos here instead of youtube you'll get more views over here and they had paperwork that said that yeah here look your viewership is going up too bad they lied though and it was all fake yeah <laughs> and it's like shouldn't they get in trouble for that yeah but no but nah, yeah they won't get in but trouble <laughs> no. nah nah <laughs> apparently they can just do whatever they want and they also own every picture you uh, upload there so be on the lookout yep. for that yep but also be sure to subscribe to the Cape Joel Comic Multiverse and uh, <laughs> Fortress of Solitude Facebook page so you're always up to speed on what we're doing next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a thing. Oh, is someone saying the podcast on iTunes is fucked up? Yeah, I screwed that up, but I put up a new one. Don't worry. I was so out of it this week because, like I said, not sleeping on the road and everything. I put up like an old podcast, and I'm sure that fucked with people's heads <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> Or they're like, what the hell is this? But don't worry, I fixed it and I got the right show from last week. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. My bad. No, that's okay. Again, 
again, as I've stated time and time again, I don't really understand uh, iTunes. And I don't understand it. I put everything up through SoundCloud, and it usually just kind of takes care of itself. We got to work to get it up on Spotify. Oh, is it not on Spotify yet? Yeah, we got to do that. I then. don't know. I'm pretty sure you've got to go through something to get it up on there. Oh, probably. Someone told me years ago when someone approached me about maybe getting uh, the comic multiverse on like a more official channel, like a more official podcast network. Mm hmm. Uh, they kind of turned up their nose to and they're like, oh, you're on SoundCloud, huh? Oh, yeah, that doesn't really give us the analytics we want or need or anything. And they just never called me back again. And I'm like, oh, well, that's good to know that I've sunk hundreds of dollars into an app that doesn't do anything for me. That's that's awesome. <laughs> well, but, I, but what's I the already... bet that SoundCloud like keeps its analytics? It's not like giving it out willy nilly to everyone and actually protecting data. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? And it's funny. I remember when we moved the show from Podbean uh to soundcloud and i'm like oh cool i'll never have to move again because these guys actually take money directly from me and i don't need a credit card although i have a credit card now i did mm -hmm. i didn't when we started this <laughs> so i don't know i i definitely don't want to have to migrate the whole show is what i don't want to do although it would be nice to get some more ads and everything i should do what sal from comic pop does and i should just offer to uh what is it sell ad space oh thank you uh john morbeard for following yeah and thank you for hosting Yes, I, sh I should just at the top of the show and be like, hey, do you have 50 bucks, roughly, American? Uh, do you have an ad that you want to re uh, want me to read on the show? Because we'll do it at the top of every episode for 50 bucks. Just give me 50 bucks, we'll do it. <laughs> 50 you can punch me in the ad. stomach really hard. 50 bucks an ad. 50 bucks each. Yeah, you can punch me in the stomach really hard for 50 bucks. You got a band? You got an event you need to promote? <laughs> no, I won't promote your Nazi newsletter. <laughs> but that's the only line I'll draw. <laughs> anything else is fine <laughs> yeah i don't love credit cards either chat no doubt about it but unfortunately i had to get it for business reasons yeah <laughs> yes so uh, i guess with that we can hop on into what happened this week we actually do have a new segment i promise mm -hmm. although really when we start talking about bullshit it gets harder and harder to stop yeah it does <laughs> Uh, so in the unexpected news files this week, Werewolf by Night, everyone knows this character, right? He's the Marvel hero who is both a superhero and a werewolf. He shows up in the monster and paranormal books all the time. Yep. Uh, well, I can only assume because Moon Knight is getting more popular and Moon Knight is getting more, you know, uh, looks thrown his way. They're like, I oh, you know we, we need another similar character to start uh, giving books to. And uh, the news this week is that Werewolf by Night will be returning with a brand new series. They don't mention if it's a mini series or a full series. I can only imagine it's going to be a mini series yeah. or if it's not, it'll end up being a mini series. <laughs> But the surprise twist of this is that, you know, which which comic writer did they get to pen this Werewolf by Night book? And the answer is they didn't get any comic book writer. They went to the world of music, and it's going to be Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas who's going to be writing this one. It's good to know that that guy's not dead. <laughs> yeah. this That guy's clearly a super nerd, because wasn't he also like Vega in one of those really uh, shitty Street Fighter movies? I think so. I think, he's, yeah... I think maybe the legend of Chun Li. I think. Yes, that was the one. So clearly, this guy every so often uses his uh, what is it? His uh, clout <laughs> as a as a. I was gonna say a second banana, but now like a third or fourth banana <laughs> in a popular music group to get to live his nerdy dreams. And for that, I really can't blame him. Yeah, yeah, you know, do what you love. Yeah, do what you love. He loves Street Fighter, and he clearly loves comic books because he clearly had a Werewolf by Night pitch, which is one more Werewolf by Night pitch than I had. <laughs> yeah, he's a one-up on everyone. Indeed. Uh, I haven't been reading that Deadpool book now, but I like I heard that Deadpool became King of the Monsters because he was married to Queen of the Monsters. Is Werewolf by Night in that book, or am I thinking of the uh, Wolfman? I, I have no idea. It's hard to tell them apart. It's true. You know, you, you've seen, seen one werewolf, you've seen them all. We're not saying the comic <laughs> multiverse is racist against werewolves. Matt's just saying they all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> As the chat is also sure to bring up, at least Taboo is an Apple D app. Yeah, his name is Apple D Apple. Oh, geez, That's really? That's the other guy. <laughs> yes, Fergie Ferg, and I forget. Uh, oh, and Will, I, Will I, I Am, <laughs> naturally. There. And the other guy is Apple D Apple. I didn't know that. Yep, that's that's their name. That's the thing. 
Heck, I only knew that because what is it? Uh, in one of their early music videos, when they were doing like a Price is Right parody, they all said their names. I'm like, ha ha ha, those are funny joke names. Oh no, that's really actually their rap names. Okay, they oh. picked that for themselves. <laughs> that's unfortunate. I mean, look. I mean, look, I'm not saying Cape Joel is a particularly cool name, but at least my name is Joel and I don't actually wear a cape. <laughs> that's only because you don't have a cape. Rather... <laughs> no, it's true. I could wear one whenever I want. Actually, I got a friend who works at a rent fair and uh, he told me he would actually uh, like commission one for me, like the <laughs> ones that the knights and shit use. And I'm like, like fuck yeah. yeah you got to wear that and your fedora when you go out on the town. And you Absolutely. need a cane. Hello. Yes, hello, lady. <laughs> Step into my DeLorean that I also own. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what what is the creepiest car and you can't say, uh, what is it, panel-less, windowless van? <laughs> I know, like a, like a shitty beaten-up Subaru from, like, 1995. That's a pretty good one. Again, a particularly dirty station wagon that's been through it. Uh, one of those wood-paneled I mean, I, ones. Yeah, I wouldn't say an El Camino is creepy, but it's definitely it definitely sends a message. Mm -hmm. So you know, down uh, down in the comment section, everyone tell us what is the creepiest vehicle that's not a white panelist van. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of this one. One oh no, stream truck. That's the one. <laughs> rusty ice cream truck that you drive around because <laughs> there's nothing creepy about that oh fuck that reminds me so i actually knew a guy in my neighborhood uh he, he he used to be a postman right so he actually drove around in a post truck even after they fired him and it got to the oh, point geez. where it's like you can't do that anymore that's against the law so he just spray painted the entire post van so he just drove around in a mail truck that he spray painted oh that's not creepy at all no again that's that you know i think i may have answered this question for me everyone L life answered this question life was funnier <laughs> than the internet oh the party pug says the tesla truck you yeah. know what party pug y you know what can of coke for you you might actually be right a certain type of people the... will, will have that <laughs> Yeah, exactly, because if you're driving the Tesla truck, that tells me, A, you have way too much money, B, you're an early adopter, and C, mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, an old police car? Fair enough, yeah, an old police car, that's a good one, too. I know every year, uh, what is it, because I live in a small, rednecky town, whenever they would have, like, the Destruction Derby, the car that always mm -hmm. won was always, like, the police cruiser from last year that they would paint up mm -hmm. and put shit on. Yep. Which makes me think, I'm like, really, my small town got new cop cars every year? There's maybe only a <laughs> thousand people here. What? <laughs> Man, spending, spending's nuts. But uh, for there, believe it or not, we actually do have more news. And this this was a story that got a surprising amount on social media before stopping before we recorded, which is often the case here. And that is that Disney is going to be dropping the Fox title from 20th Century Fox Studios. And some people were weirdly incensed by this yeah i i don't understand i again i think it's just because it's disney and it's it's popular to hate on mm. them because they're the big evil corporation now even though there's like a dozen other even evil corporation evil corporation. you know um yeah again we were talking about facebook earlier i'm pretty sure disney doesn't keep my pictures and sell my data to yeah. think tanks to influence elections yeah <laughs> not yet anyway <laughs> give it time yeah i don't really give a shit that they're taking the fox away from 20th century fox they they own fox entertainment now they can do with yeah. it whatever they want and i, I, mean, I guarantee you if if uh who was the other company that could have bought them comcast yeah 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 they would have yeah. done the same yeah they would have done the exact same yeah again i don't know what people are thinking here and yes i know the 20th century fox logo is at the beginning of some of your favorite movies and everything but i mean come on seriously do you care that deeply about a logo is that what you're truly in love with i think that's when we're truly fucked as a species and everything when we have loyalty not even to a work of art connected to the logo but to the logo itself that's that's what i find kind of ironic about this you got all these people talking about disney shields and how they always love you know the mouse and everything and yet they're they're getting all up in arms about a logo like i find yeah, that very getting, funny 
yeah, you're getting upset about a piece of text. And again, you know, maybe as a comic fan too, I have an interesting take on this, and I'm sure you do too. How many times have they changed the DC Marvel logo in our oh, time? I think like just just in us reviewing comics, it's changed probably about four times. I, at least the DC logo mm -hmm. has. Yeah, they've changed the DC logo a lot, but yeah, and I never care. I'm like, no, it's the same thing. It's just a different logo. It's you know, yeah. it's what's inside the book. It's what's on the other side of the logo that I care about. <laughs> As the chat says, it's a pretty sweet logo. You're not wrong. The you know, I like I like the searchlights. The searchlights are indeed pretty, uh, you know, cool. See, that's another question now, Matt. What's the best movie logo? I think <laughs> Universal has a really good logo. Universal does have a very good logo. I like that whole planet sort of thing and i like uh, although i like the old one where it was obvious that it was an actual mm. model and not a cgi yeah. render uh what is it uh shaw brothers that's a pretty good logo mm. yeah a lot of the um uh chinese companies have really intricate like detailed logos mm -hmm. uh toei all the people who mm -hmm. do tokusetsu yeah. size stuff they have the one with the crashing water and everything yeah. uh pair paramount has some good ones uh who who did the saw movies because i liked it because they like uh, horrified it up and everything uh lionsgate lionsgate right because you had all the gears and everything and the lionsgate opening but whenever they would do a saw or a horror movie it was all like you know red and rusted and everything yeah <laughs> as the chat saying too labels are meaningless just look at dc black label oh but dumb tish <laughs> <laughs> I agree, man. Labels are stupid, man. We should live in a world with world without labels, man. <laughs> I li I live out loud without labels every day, man. Yes, I agree, Party Pug. The one with the Pegasus, that's a good one too. And sometimes it's it's like an angel or the Statue of Liberty. Oh yeah, uh, that's TriStar and Columbia. I think. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, those are pretty good. But man, I sure hope they don't get rid of that lion, though. That's that's the one logo I really care about. Do you think that lion's okay? I think that lion's okay. The MGM okay. lion is okay. He's probably rich as fuck, isn't he? Oh, that I don't know. Lion? I think MGM's like bankrupt or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. But in the heyday, you know that lion. I think like Sony rich. bought them or something. <laughs> You're probably right, but man. Back in the day, I bet that line had some raging ass <laughs> parties. Him and the, uh, what is it, NBC Peacock and all the other animals, the Bucky Beaver. They were just sitting around doing cocaine off strippers. It was a great time for them. <laughs> That's the shared universe we need next, Matt. We need all the animal mascots coming together the for brand, an Avengers. The brand cinematic universe. The brand. I, I am really amazed no one has actually pitched that. Isn't that what, like, um,. What was that failed charlie sheen movie uh food fight wasn't that kind of like yeah. it, like they were all brands or something but because it yeah, was like yeah, such yeah, a yeah. terrible film and like yeah no one gave a shit about I mean, it i mean i guess that is kind of what the emoji movie was too wasn't it just internet brands you could also argue toy story was that as well except that was in universe brands with the toys it's true that they were all based off real toys, but you had to be like a big nerd to really uh, get what each toy was referencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a heck of a thing. <laughs> Chat saying to uh, Matt, when's our cats review? Oh God. Well, when we see it, oh, I have, I've actually seen it, but I don't know whether <laughs> I saw the, the original version or that new one they put out in the theaters. I couldn't, couldn't tell you. <laughs> I could not tell you. No, you know, Matt just didn't actually see the movie. He just dropped a bunch of acid and watched a bunch of cats in the street and imagine he saw the movie. Maybe that, yeah, that is what happened. I ate some bad sushi. <laughs> and just had a horrible I saw fever cats. dream. <laughs> yeah, you saw cats somewhere. He doesn't know if it was the movie, but he definitely saw cats. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it's funny, you know, to see cats there. Like, obviously, it was a big box office failure. But as is often the case on the internet, people love failure and they love schadenfreude and they love like, you know, uh, what is it, gathering around it. It's the warm fire that uh, warms content creators <laughs> all over the internet. I've seen people I follow on Twitter who are like, oh, I've seen Cats for the fourth time. Like, oh, I'm going back to see Cats again. And they're like, but do you like the movie? No, it's terrible, but I get to talk about it. And people love it when I talk about bad movies and we can all agree something <laughs> is bad. Yeah, it's... 
you, you know a movie is bad when after a week they decide to put out a new version with completed quote unquote special effects mm -hmm. uh but then also take it off the all of the oscars uh what it was considered yeah. for it was considered for like special effects as well i was like uh, oh man okay. I, I hope it gets an a nominated and then wins i'd love that i would absolutely love that <laughs> Same. I absolutely would. Oh, speaking of the Oscars, I didn't write this down, but I guess we're going to have to talk about this at some point. I think this broke last week when we were finishing up. I guess the Joker man got like 11 <laughs> nominations. And it doesn't deserve a single one. Not really, no. I mean, the fact that that movie got 11 nominations and Uncut Gems didn't get shit is the yeah. height of bullshit. You want to know something else? The movie, what? the Joker is obviously it rips off like king of comedy taxi driver though both those oh, movies shamelessly. never got any nominations and yet this movie did um, and that's it's not really even original sad. or anything that's the really movie, sad the movies it ripped off didn't get nominations but this one did and then i'm reminded too it's like well hey green book last year didn't that also have a comedy director turned serious drama director? And didn't they just throw a bunch of awards at that one too, even though it really didn't deserve it either? I think so, yeah. I don't think it that's, won any of the, the real big ones, but it won some. That's what we got to do, Matt. We've been making boner comedies for so long. We've got to turn around tomorrow and be like, hey, everyone, on this very special episode of the Comic Multiverse, we're talking about AIDS or something. I <laughs> don't know. We still managed to make it funny, though. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> and you see, we, we couldn't do that either because it's just like, you know, no, it's like, but you guys are actually kind of informed on the subject. You guys might actually look into it. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. God, I, I, God, I wish I could give credit to the person who did the tweet. And, oh, thank you, Party Pug, for that. I just saw. Yeah. They said where it's like, you know, uh, Todd Phillips uh, made a movie about the Joker, a man who thinks he's an underdog, even though he really isn't when you look at it in the broader scope. And everyone's treating this movie like it's an underdog movie at this award show, even though it really isn't because comic book movies are getting nominated all over the place. And Heath Ledger already won a fucking award for that, playing the Joker. That's the thing. I saw heaps of people saying, oh, this would be the first time anyone's won an award for the Joker and all that. And I'm like, Heath Ledger did it before then. And then Batman 89 also did it as well, and that had the Joker in it. People, People's memories are short, and again, I don't give a shit about the Oscars because really people only care about them when they're either feeling vindicated or slighted. So, you yeah. know. Also, I don't count the Joker as a comic book movie because it's a shame to be a comic book movie. It has almost zero connection to anything from the comics. It, no it basically it makes has, up. It has no connections. I'm just going to say no connections whatsoever. It has names and that's about it. Yeah, that's all it is. And they, they could just be normal people names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as the chat is saying too, there's a ton of movies that probably could, should have gotten some mention in there. We mentioned Uncut Gems, Knives Out probably should have gotten a little something. Uh, heck, mm -hmm. uh, Lupita Nyong'o didn't get anything for us, and that yeah. is a crying shame because she fucking owns that movie playing double parts. Yeah, again, it feels like all the movies that got nominated are more recent movies. So again, yeah. I think I don't think anyone that, from that the, happens a lot. Any anyone in the academy watch movies from the beginning of last year, like recently. You know, the sad thing is, is that's true of like every genre when there's a time for a best of awards show. That yeah, people forget what comes out in the beginning of the year because people only remember what happens now. Even I'm guilty of that. Mm -hmm. I had to go back in time when I did my comic one for uh, Avengers: No Road Home. Where I'm like, that came out this year, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. You forget, man. You forget. <laughs> the chat saying, uh, so a uh, Joker commentary went, I don't know, Jersey Luck. I don't know. Do we really want to do one on that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we're ready for the level of society that will come our way if we <laughs> that's if all we the, voice That's all anything. it would be. It would just be us making society jokes. Gamers over rise and up over jokes. <laughs> yeah, really, over and over. Finally, Joker, a movie for gamers. <laughs> Finally, Matt, the long nightmare is over. <laughs> we have finally been represented in movies. It's a, it's about time. Man, have you? I'm sure you've seen this because we're on the same internet and on the same Twitter. Have you seen inspirational Joker quote Twitter community? And I think it's on YouTube too. Yeah, where they 
use the Joker as like a a hero or like someone to look up to. Yeah, and I'm like, you guys are fucking with us, right? This is like the Church of Satanism where it's all like a big laugh and a big joke and everything, and like you know that none of this is serious. I don't know anymore. They did the same thing with um, uh, like Suicide Squad and Harley Quinn and Joker's relationships. Like, oh, we want mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, you don't understand anything about these characters, do you? <laughs> I, I I really hope that's just people fucking around. I really hope that that is, because if not, I, I worry. It, I think it's half people fucking around, and then it's mm. it, it's started by people who are fucking around, but then people buy into it, like stupid and people. And they take and it kids. too seriously. Yeah. Fair. That's that's fair. I could totally see that. Uh, all right, what else do we got going on here? That was that was a good rant starting from, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, Disney dropped the fox from its thing to let's talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, our next piece of news here is a Marvel piece of news, and that is, uh, hey Matt, it's been a couple weeks and they haven't announced a new X Men book yet. I think it's about time they announce a new X Men book. Yeah, it's about time and they'll announce this, and then they'll announce all the tie-ins for this. Naturally, so yes, we're getting our next X Men book already in April, and it's called Children of the Atom. And uh, honestly, I guess this makes a lot of sense because uh, obviously Hickman had set up the whole idea of the hybrid mutants and the weird future and everything. And then Mm -hmm. they just kind of dropped that off. But it looks like we're going to be getting hybrid mutants. Yeah, it's it's finally coming full circle. And I'll definitely be reading this because I I've cut my I've cut my X-Men books down to X-Force, X-Men, and then I'll probably do Wolverine when that comes out. I want to read the other ones, but I just don't have time. Yeah. That's where I'm about to. I want to keep up with Marauders. I liked Excalibur, but again, I got to make a cut somewhere for Wolverine. But yeah, I want to work this into it. It's funny. Hickman on Twitter basically came out and said, hey, you know, we we never intended when we put this new Dawn of X stuff together for people to read everything or to feel like they need to read everything. We just wanted to create an X-Men book for every member of the audience out there. Read what you like, know it's interconnected, and you know we will have crossovers at some point in the future, but don't feel like you need to read everything. On one hand, I'm like, oh, that's a nice sentiment. But on the other hand, I'm like, fuck off. You don't want everyone to read everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> You might not, but the money men at top certainly do. <laughs> you know, your CB Saglewskis definitely want people to read everything. Yeah, and I, I've, from what I've, like, heard, like, the X-Men books are doing pretty well at the moment. Yes. Oh, yeah, I think they're, like, one of the biggest things at Marvel at the moment, and why wouldn't they be? Yeah. Because so far they've all been very solid quality. And again, too, I I think they're actually going to start phasing some of these out themselves. Like, I think Hickman's time on X-Men or new X-Men or whatever you want to call it. I think that's actually planned to wrap up. And then we're going to have the giant sized X-Men, which are Mm kind of like the team ups of everyone. And then we got this coming not long after that. I know the guy, Oh, who was it? I think it was the guy who was doing the Conan book since he's finishing up there. He's moving over to one of the X-Men books. Yes. I think that is X-Men is what he's going to be writing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also one of those things, too, where it's like, well, if I want the whole story, do I just have to follow Hickman around, or is Hickman just launching the universe, then taking a break? That's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to read everything Hickman's doing since he set up all of this. Yeah. Yeah, he seems to be the progenitor of it all. Oh, also, too, there's going to be a new X-Factor book, and I kept saying forever, hey, when's there going to be a new X-Factor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there is one. There is, and it's going to be a detective book. Dawkins is on it, and they're going to make good on that thing they promised uh, all the way at the beginning of this new X-Men series, where they're like, oh, hey, we're cloning people, but this is a problem in a comic universe when people come back from the dead all the time on their own and or might be missing. We better go look and find these people before you know we fire up the resurrection machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny uh but yeah i'm i'm definitely interested in children of the atom it looks cool and it looks very different it looks like none of the other x-men books that are out yeah i i really like that uh that future that was teased in in the house and powers of x with the the fused mutants together like rasputin and all that that looked really cool i'm intrigued to find out how we got there uh, Wayne Enterprise in the chat talking about uh, the new Harley Quinn episode from this week. Yeah, I don't think that was a Todd Phillips reference, Wayne Enterprise. I think that was just an asshole reference in general. <laughs> Todd Phillips doesn't own saying dumb shit like that, but he sure says it. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, so that's X Men, everyone. And yeah, l like Matt said, I think I'm gonna have to start making some cuts too, like Excalibur. But I don't know if I'll go back to it. Yeah, I liked enjoy I liked reading that as well. I liked I loved Marauders and New Mutants, but again, I've got to make a cut. Mm -hmm. It's too much. It costs too much money. And, you know, yeah. I hope, I really hope that, uh, what is it, Hickman is as good as his word on this one, and you don't have to read everything. I guess time will tell. Yeah, well, so far I haven't, like, missed anything that, like, seems, like, no, integral to the plot. So, yeah. I, I mean, I think the question will be, will uh, will the entire, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, will uh, Marvel Comics in general be able to hold up a new X-Men book every week, sometimes multiple new X-Men books a week? Yeah, cause, yeah, well, that's the thing, like, a lot of them are, like, stacking up, so, you, like, there were some, like, back when they were first starting, we'd get, like, three a week. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a lot. Loot. Lude Skeletor mentioning too, didn't they show Laura in her Wolverine costume again? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they did. And that looks fucking dope. Yeah, they didn't show Gabby though, however. Which intrigues no. me. No. No, yeah. Well, we haven't seen Gabby at all on the island. No. I wonder. Huh. I wonder if they'll uh, let her I on mean, since she's technically like not a mutant, since she's like a clone of Right, a clone of a clone. Yeah. I wonder if they'll let her on. Do, do they draw the line there? Well, we've seen the Stepford Cuckoos and shit there, mm. so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're not a clone of a clone, so there you go. Yeah. Shit, that, that's going to be a book next year, X-Clones, just for all the freaking clone <laughs> characters. <laughs> Got to sort all this out. Crisis and Infinite Clones. Oh, man. I am actually shocked Marvel Comics has not done that, because you have all the Spider-Man clones. You have Wolverine's clone. You have so many different clones. I They l really could do an event just with clone characters. You've just given Akira Yoshida the new summer event for 2021. <laughs> the clone conspiracy. This is how, too, this is how Empire part. is going to end, with all the clones coming yeah, together. <laughs> the clones were actually behind everything. <laughs> Actually, hey, speaking of that, uh, that's where we got to talk. Or no, uh, after that, we got one more story. Uh, hey, you like the Punisher, Matt. I like the Punisher. I do like the Punisher. He doesn't have a main series right now, but he has that Garth Ennett Soviet series, which has been pretty good. It's been pretty fucking brutal is, is what it's been. It has been. And again, I, I, I feel like this is a Punisher story I've wanted for a bit. And now Ed, Ed Bresson, again in April is going to give us something I didn't know I wanted, and that is a return of Frank versus Barracuda in a series he's calling Punisher versus Barracuda, and yeah. it's going to be a mini series. Yeah, and in continuity. So this is the first time Barracuda has been put into continuity. Right, although people argue that uh, Eminem series they did, Barracuda was the <laughs> villain in that, and that was technically in 616, and everyone's like, no, don't, don't, don't fucking mention the Eminem crossover. <laughs> that never happened. Don't, don't mention it. <laughs> Just because it technically happened in six, uh, you know, in the six one six universe, <laughs> fuck off. Had it Man, happened in six one six A. There you go. I'm really going to be interested to see how Ed Bresson writes a character like Barracuda, especially in 2020. For those mm. who don't remember, uh, Barracuda was a Punisher Max uh, Garth Ennis character who was, you know, basically he, he was the anti-Punisher back before people really started making anti-Punishers where, you know, uh, Frank was very dour and didn't talk very much. Uh, Barracuda was actually very happy and very jovial and would never shut the fuck up. And, you know, Punisher killed people he thought was evil. Barracuda killed for money and just because he really enjoyed it. And he was a cannibal and an implied yeah. rapist and like a, he, every terrible thing you could think of he was. Yeah, he was a pretty fucked up individual. He was just the worst person and was clearly popular enough in his day that he actually got a miniseries, a Marvel Knights miniseries of his own. Because, <laughs> again, there's there's something kind of fun and funny about him, even though, as I stop and think about him, where it's like, is Barracuda a racist caricature? I don't know, because <laughs> he's like a big, brutish black man who drops the N-word all the time. And, you know, is, you know, he sings and they say he's had like a background as a rapper in the Eminem crossover, interestingly enough. <laughs> I think I think he like draws that line. Like very he really fine. He, he, he dances. <laughs> yeah, he dances on that line is what he does. And uh, I, again, you know, I always come back to this idea where it's like, you know, not every he hero needs to be a role model, especially not anti heroes and definitely not villains. But I'm also kind of like, yeah, 
I don't know, but I guess we'll see. I'm very interested to see where this is going to go. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is going to be so damn cool. We we kind of starved for Punisher stuff at the moment. We only got that that uh, mm-hmm. mini series, which ends in like two issues or something. Um, yeah, so it came yeah, very quick. So yeah, it's great. We're getting another Punisher book, and hopefully this spins off into an actual ongoing again. Yeah, I, I would read Ed Breston's Punisher. I think he's well suited for that kind of material. Funny too, where it's like you know why why a barracuda why now especially in 2020 is this just an idea breston has been sitting on or are they trying to resurrect the character because they want to put him in something yeah i i don't know i honestly don't know i always thought barracuda versus luke cage would be a cool story oh yeah that'll be really cool yeah i always thought that would be a fun one put him up against him interesting Interestingly enough, uh, Lute Skeletor mentioning too, did you see that Jerry Conway was going off on the QN and people for using the Punisher logo and saying that Frank would hate them? Yes, I did, man. Poor Jerry Conway. The internet keeps giving that man new and different reasons to snap every day when it comes to being the man who invented the Punisher. And I love he just completely, you know, both barreled where it's like, look, you you guys are fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, like, the Punisher in the comics does that all the time. He did it in that recent uh, Matthew Rosenberg run where he like cops were like, like yes, going around with the Punisher simulator and he like fucked him up. Yeah. He's like, you should not be doing this. If you need a hero, look up to Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> Chat saying to the Punisher needs more rogues. Indeed he does. Cause he kills all his famous <laughs> ones. And Barracuda is one of the few people that they know to be a Punisher villain. Cause he made it two arcs before he killed him. <laughs> yeah. He's a real deal. Him and Jigsaw are like the two. The two people know. And I guess Ma Nucci because she was in the video game and the Nucci's got referenced in the TV show. Mm-hmm. Is she going to come back next? Or are we going to get Ma Nucci next? I'd like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Give give the Punisher an actual real rogues gallery. I guess that's always been the problem with the Punisher. When he's effective, he kills everybody. But being an effective vigilante means you don't get repeat business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, more more power to this one. I'm interested to see what this one's going to be like. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Oh, uh, Matt alluded to it previously, but Marvel Empire is going to be getting not one, but two uh, zero issues to help set off this big event that I guess is going to be the first big event of 2020. You're getting one Avengers zero issue and one Fantastic Four issue. Uh, fitting as both these teams have long and storied histories with uh, the Skrulls and the Shi'ar and all the different spacefaring races out there. Uh, the Avengers one in particular has my attention because uh, Jim Zub's going to be writing it. Yeah, yeah, that actually surprised me when he announced that this week. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This is actually, I I said in my recent, I think it was for the incoming issue one, that like most Marvel events recently haven't felt like actual events. They've all felt like previews for yeah that, that summer's new number ones or whatever um but it's this true. this actually feels like an event now like with all this stuff it coming does. out and they i think they announced as well like like they showed like the covers and stuff for the first mm. four issues of this event and again it, it feels like an actual event it also feels very old, old school marvel yeah. is what it feels like this feels like the uh what is it like the scroll shiar war this or it, it feels like a operation cosmic storm it feels like stuff from back in the day uh mm-hmm. interesting too on this events avengers team as you will notice this is a very different avengers team than what we got in aaron's right now right now this has a nice little smattering of characters from all over the place you've got x-men and the thing and vision and black knight and scarlet Witch and spider-man yeah yeah all these really cool characters and it kind of makes sense for like a big thing like this like a big like war more or less that's coming to earth they would recruit extra extra help and the big guns more or less like scarlet witch and and storm and doctor strange and all that it's cool too because it's like oh you know finally we have an avengers team that doesn't look like it's being dictated by the movies not that i don't mm-hmm. like the movies and not that i don't don't like what jason aaron is doing but still this is this is almost kind of like a throwback to like uh bendis era new avengers where it's like oh well anyone could show up on the team yeah yeah and i'm definitely down for that uh oh also too we can see dr strange's collar so he's on that team yep. too seemingly yep 
Also, also She Hulk is there, but she's not her monstrous form. So I'm guessing by the time this comes around, She Hulk goes back to being normal She Hulk. Yay! I'll get all those comments abusing the character. No more. No, no more yeah. comments like that. Yay! Yeah. Wow, boy, that uh, anything new with She Hulk activates a weird part to the I, comic book fan does. lizard brain, does. does it not? Oh my god! <laughs> I I didn't I didn't think that was a button, but that's a button. <laughs> That's a button. That's a paddling. Also, too, I guess I need to get back into what's happening in Fantastic Four because naturally they have had so much dealings with all these different alien species, and they definitely seem to be saying, "Hey, this Fantastic Four book is the book to read for Empire." Yeah, I kind of fell off it, but yeah, I should probably get back on it. Yeah, it's cool that Al Ewing basically gets to pay off a bunch of shit he started in his canceled New Avengers run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, the sword and, you know, Hulkling becoming emperor and everything. Apparently that started there and I wouldn't have known. No, yeah. It could, yeah, because that just, like, kind of ended, didn't it? It did. It was canceled very prematurely, as were most of Ewing's books. But then he made Hulk the biggest goddamn thing ever and he's going to be taking over Guardians. So now, now Ewing gets to choose. <laughs> yeah, suddenly he's, like, the hot new thing. Yeah, he gets to... He gets to, to do it which you no know, good for him couldn't happen to a nicer guy mm -hmm. and as the chat's saying too spider-man's been on his own for a while indeed he hasn't been on a team for a very long time yeah which i think is like it's not a detriment at all like because it's given him a bit no a bit of bit of room to breathe in his own books and everything like like his amazing spider-man book is so damn good mm. and as uh, as we've saw of course from jim zub's work on the champions he knows writing teams he knows dynamics and obviously from his work in no road home and no surrender he mm -hmm. has a love and affinity for the avengers so i think we're going to be in very good hands yes and i hope hope as well uh for that f no road home series that had the uh, hercules in it we get a payoff to the end of that where hercules went off into space with zeus and all that are yeah. they going to be like like the ones that come in at the 11th hour to help that would be that would be cool maybe they're gonna try and tie something in closer to the eternals heck maybe they're got that on the back burner for the uh no road home no surrender threequel whatever that ends up being yeah because everything comes in threes everything's a trilogy <laughs> uh all right what do we got after that there uh, oh so here's a piece of news i really didn't expect to talk about and one that i maybe don't believe myself until i have it in my hands but three jokers finally slated for <laughs> april according to the solicitations yeah i i'm gonna hold my breath on this <laughs> it's real it's happening probably maybe and also as matt flashes up the artwork here i'm like oh yeah it's a black label book but it's also in continuity even though none of the other black label books have been in continuity <laughs> but this one is yeah it, it is and it isn't i think i think like um the artist jason's for the book said like it is and isn't like if you want it in continuity it is if you don't mm -hmm. it's not i'm like okay, that's not really how it works but okay also, you guys, you brought this up and you first started talking about it at the end of DC, uh, like, Universe Rebirth, number one. And it's been how long since then? And basically the DC Universe uh, Rebirth run has come to an end in that time. And we're, we're like, two eras ahead now. Yeah, and ever since then, we've had, like, one reference to it, I think. Yes, we're like, I think so. We're, like, Batman says, oh, there's three jokers we could go hunt them down but then tom king did everything he did in his book and it never was brought up again we had joker running around yeah. in that book we've got joker coming up in james tynan book mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all i can say is after all the delays and all the bullshit and everything i really really hope this one blows everyone away because if it doesn't it's going to be really disappointing <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's jeff johns and like I, you know doomsday clock was was really great despite the delays and everything and i think this one will be pretty it's true good. you're right if anyone can pull it off jeff johns can the man has turned you know water into wine a few times already and slam dunked stuff mm -hmm. he probably shouldn't have been able to yeah so you know more more power to him on this one and yeah i guess now that uh, doomsday clock is finally done and you know now that shazam continues to get delayed they had time to finish this one mm -hmm. 
as the Chad mentions too, there's also going to be a Joker 80th anniversary one shot as well in April. So they're just we're just getting our fill of Joker yeah. in April. Uh, all right then. So from there, that's that's really all we got to say on that one. We we can't even go into a like tirade or into a side rant there. That's that's just it. The book's coming out. Maybe I don't know. I'll believe it when it's in my hand. Yeah. When even then, I still won't believe. I'll still. It's it's not real. <laughs> it's a, It's all. It's all a hallucination, man. It's all. It's all a construct. Uh. Oh, so they're saying too in the chat that uh, they don't remember seeing it in the solicits for April. Well, they were talking about it, and I assumed that it was in the solicits for April. Because mm. again, everyone started talking about it again after not talking about it in forever. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jane's mentioning the Morbius trailer too. I didn't put that on the news docket because who the fuck cares about Morbius? Um, two thousand and three me might care about it, but I'm not two thousand and three me anymore. So. <laughs> But but the vulture's gonna be in it. The vulture might be in it. <laughs> yeah, for they, a they where, ruined where... they ruined the greatest surprise in the whole trailer. You know, they ruined it in a trailer. Yeah, yeah. Now you literally don't need to see the movie because now you know how they plan to connect it to uh, the MCU Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Jane saying edgy Morbius. Well, technically, he's always been edgy Morbius. They they're not doing anything new or different in the trailer. That is just kind of how he is. Yeah. He's a man, got a disease, bats. Yeah. Can vampire. you believe? J can you believe Jared Leto actually crippled himself for this role? I know, man. You know, he's a method actor. You got to really respect him. And not just did he cripple himself, he crippled himself every day for the part, too. He would take a hammer to his kneecaps <laughs> over and over again. He made, you know, he made everyone in craft services watch because he's just that method and actor. <laughs> he just cares that much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, he sure ain't going to be the, he ain't going to be the Joker this time, though. Now, what's the bet this movie does, like, what fucking Venom did not somehow manages to make fucking money? Somehow. I have I no idea how. But I guess, like, I don't think it will because, like, with Venom, people know who Venom is because of Spider-Man and everything. People yeah. will go, like, what the fuck is Mobius? <laughs> yeah, really. Is, is this that techno musician? No, that's Moby. Oh. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> I, I, you know, you say that, Matt, but like I did actually see some people on Twitter where they're being like, man, you know, Marvel's really out of ideas with Morbius. They really should have adopted horror, you know, much earlier on. And I'm like, it's not the same thing. It's a different thing. <laughs> That's the thing. And the trailer goes out of its way to say, like, it's just an MCU because it's like from the studio that brought you mm -hmm, the two mm -hmm. sp good Spider Man films. I'm like, you didn't. You didn't. That Marvel you Studios produced really. them, they made them. We we know that now but this the, you know but this is unfortunately the pill we gotta swallow this is the vampire shaped pill we gotta swallow to get a third spider-man movie and it's like <laughs> look if we gotta deal with morbius i guess that's fine yeah i i wonder if this is like one of those like call and answer things where it's like oh they all they like mobius reference like adrian tombs and spider-man murdering mysterio all that sort of stuff and marvel studios would be like we're not gonna reference your shitty films <laughs> yeah yeah for real <laughs> yeah as the chat says i hate taking the pill i hate taking it too but i guess we have to take this and it's pill a, the thing is it's not a pill you have to swallow it's a pill that's like shoved up your ass by a doctor it's it's an enema. You got to take the Morbius <laughs> enema, everyone. Oh, Crusader Contu saying, did you see the PS4 game poster in the background? Yes, also that. Yeah. Is that just because they can't use the, like, Homecoming Far From Home suits? Like, like there's the there's I don't MCU know. Spider Man? But, like, that's so such, like, a weird thing to, like, do. It's or so more than weird. likely, was this movie just thrown together? That's probably what it was. <laughs> much like venom thrown together not because we had a particularly good idea or story we wanted to tell but because we needed to rush a movie into production yeah <clears throat> and that's how you got morbius everyone i will i really will be interested because obviously i didn't expect venom to make the money it did and again i'm not expecting it to make any money for the sequel but i've been wrong and if i'm wrong i'll own it 
Yeah, yeah. That was so disappointing seeing Venom make that much money because it was so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why, everyone? Yeah, how? It's, it's why? the cat's effect. I, I, I need to see it. I need to see Tom Hardy <laughs> sweat and bite the lobster. <laughs> If if he does more of that in the second film, I'll like that because that was genuinely like funny. It's, it's like, the only oh, interesting like, part of the movie. Oh, this is where you're going with the character. You're just gonna make him sweat profusely and get into lobster tanks. <laughs> I'm a physical actor, Matt. I do all my own sweating on set. <laughs> yeah, they want to spread the same speed. Those, I'm like, the same no, no, stunt sp sweat. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm a good actor, man. I can do it myself. I just think it. It just comes out. <laughs> That's how good I am. <laughs> uh, but, you know, with uh, that out of the way, we can finally talk to, I guess, the, the main event. Uh, this week, we finally got the big finale for Crisis on the CW, the big crossover, the big multi-night event. We did. We got the final two episodes. And that was uh, Arrow and uh, Legends, yes? Yeah, Arrow and the Legends uh, premiere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, where, where do we want to start with this? Because a lot happened. A lot happened in these last two episodes, and they still had time to somehow fill it with filler at points. Yeah, shockingly. At points, I know. It, they, they, they actually kind of, you know, uh, pace it very interestingly is that they have the big battle with the anti monitor in that Arrow episode and they give you what is really unquestionably an ending. I'm like, oh, that's that was a real ending. And then you get another episode where it's like, oh, and now they're setting up what life in a post crisis universe is. Oh, that's really smart and clever. I'm glad they did that because obviously for a whole, you know, generation of people, they don't know what a crisis is. And so they need to teach them what a post crisis yeah. means. It was, it was very much like the comic in that way. Where it's like the last, I want to say two, two issues of the comic were basically like, okay, anti monitors beaten. Like what happens now? Like what's this earth? Oh, here's Wally West becoming the new flash. Here's, you know, this Superman going off into the paradise world, all this sort of stuff. And that's what, it, mm -hmm. what these two episodes were really like. Yes. Very, very much. So, uh, great cameo by, uh, Marv Wolfman. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really great. That was really cute and really adorable. And he's like, Hey, can I have uh, your autograph? Make it, make it out to Marv. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. I don't, then, think, no, I don't think a lot yeah. of people would have gotten that one. No, they didn't. And then they mentioned uh, a Perez Street, too. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. They got Wolfman and Perez book reference. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I uh, I was not expecting Lex Luthor to have as big a part as he would in these last two episodes. I love that he did. I thought it was fantastic. It's, it's very DC comic book where it's like you put Lex Luthor in any event and he's going to try and hijack it and make it all about <laughs> himself. And he does. <laughs> He does. He even gets to fight at the end because he's like, oh, yeah, I had the Book of Destiny. I gave myself superpowers. I, I love that. I love that little little caveat. It's like, oh, yeah, of course I'm going to give myself superpowers. Are you, are you insane? <laughs> yeah, and I made myself a paragon as well. So I also remember that the world got rewritten, which is also a cool way to explain that, too, where it's like, well, look, you can't just – uh, what is it uh, take away everyone's memory because you know they're going to need to remember stuff for next season and it's like okay the paragons remember and then john using psychic chicanery uh, again, what is it gets everyone else important to remember again like the like the comics where everyone in that final fight remembers the past worlds but the, the people on the new yep. earth or earth prime don't remember it also did you think it was interesting too that uh what is it we had uh killer frost show up for the fight and she had a little moment but no cisco and i'm like oh did the it was this the point where the actor finally left yeah that like he wasn't in the episodes at all was he nope that's so strange because he was in the first three and yeah did he just like was he busy somewhere else was was this his walk off because i know they kept saying that that actor was done i just didn't know how done yeah that, it's very strange for a character who's been in the show that long to just kind of disappear for the latter half of this crossover especially after like all the stuff in yeah, those I... in those first episodes where like he was given his powers back and he kind of like had like all the yeah, stuff yeah. all the character development he had done to him kind of undone and we never really got to figure mm -hmm. out like well, what's what's he was his reaction to all of this i'm sure he probably doesn't like that 
Mm -hmm. Also, the, the the resolution with Nash Wells, too, where it's like, like, this was all your fault. I'm like, it was like 50% his fault. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there was other shit going on. I, I don't know why you're putting it all on him. <laughs> he didn't, you know, know the specifics of what he was doing. It was going to, you know, wipe out the entire multiverse. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought it was funny that John got specifically mad at him, where it's like, you doomed us all, Nash Wells. I'm like, well, you, you guys get doomed, like, once a year, so, like, you'd think you'd be over it by Yeah, now. His, his doom was just a little bit worse than, like, last year's. <laughs> just a little bit more. Uh, Ollie gets to die twice and gets to come back as a Sith Lord. That was pretty fun. That was pretty cool. I, I knew he was going to become the Spectre, and his Spectre is really cool. It is, and I'm genuinely kind of shocked. I'm like, how has Green Arrow never become the Spectre in the comics? He already has a green hood. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that was, like, the, the length of their, like, discussions. Like, well, he's got a green hood. We don't really need to make him a costume. <laughs> yeah, he's already basically halfway there. That also means that Stephen Amell gets to, I think, arguably put in some of his best, best acting in mm -hmm. this universe when he gets to have his big death scene. This, the, this whole last season of of arrow has been so good for him like his acting has been has been elevated in this last season where it's actually really good it's making me think that you know maybe just maybe he will have a fruitful uh, film career post this i hope so yeah uh, but also like him being spectre uh allows for him to come back like if they need him they are like oh we'll bring the spectre in for to cameos just, yeah to show a cameo and stuff like that because you bring the spectre back he needs the spirit of vengeance if he's showing up shit's going down naturally uh you mentioned too about how you know a lot happens but how there's also a lot of busy work too where it's like okay you know uh barry you need to use the speed force to save us all and everything oh no you lost people in the speed force you gotta find them again and oh look we've changed the aspect ratio i like that and i wish they kept that aspect ratio Me through too. the whole show because it looked so much better didn't it it's like such yeah. a big change it felt like real film quality and my thing is like what's stopping you from filming the show like like that all the time is it yeah. too expensive did you have to rent the cameras what is it is it harder to edit why why don't you keep that aspect ratio i agree i wonder if i i hope someone like asks mark guggenheim that it's like the shows would be really damn good if they were filmed because they look like the effects and all that were still like their quality but they're somehow heightened by it i don't know i don't really get it but it'll just look really great yeah when they yeah, when they all have their big fight there in the Power Rangers Gorge, I was totally feeling it. Mm. They got the Gorge, and they got the same Vancouver forest in there, which Troy <laughs> even makes the joke, where yeah. it's like, you know, we're on an alien world, you think there would be an alien forest? <laughs> to which Supergirl's like, shut up, stop saying that. <laughs> Why does everyone say that? <laughs> that every planet looks just like a forest in Vancouver. Because <laughs> it is. <laughs> I kept waiting too. Where it's like, okay, Choi is here. He's the paragon of humanity. He's going to get a costume, right? He's going to get a suit. He's going to get a moment. No, no, no. I, again, that's that's kind of good. They didn't like rush that character development, so like he can appear, I guess, in Legends, maybe. Yeah, because he's got to be close to the Atom. Yeah, I, I wondered uh, where he's going to show up next. Yeah, is he going to be like? Because obviously, Brandon Routh is leaving. Uh, after this season of legends is he going to be like replacing him is yeah maybe that's what next season is going to deal with i yeah that would be really interesting i liked ryan Choi as a character he's one he's one of the few he, too, he was few, fun he brought... he's one of the few heroes that actually have like a family like a working family he's got like a new baby daughter and he's got a wife and everything he's a nerd but he's a different type of nerd than all the big brains mm -hmm. we've seen on the show so far yep that's certainly a nice touch. Uh, I mean, they uh, they try and give the origin story for the monitors and everything, and it's a very simplified origin. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can see why you did that for TV. Yeah, there's no way we're going to get the comic origin of them. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. It's like, well, who is the anti-monitor? Eh, he's literally just an evil version of, uh, what is it, of uh, the monitor we've been following, following around of Morvu. Uh, oh really? I I thought he was the child of Perpetua. No, 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 we're not touching that. <laughs> yeah, that's too new. That's too new. <laughs> Wasn't he also created by a guardian and stuff? Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> but what about all the monitors that like view the orrery of worlds and ah, zip, 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 zip. 
next next crossover next crossover <laughs> i mean there was that big city that the monitor was living in so i don't know maybe that city was filled with monitors we don't know <laughs> was well, see no that's a, that's actually a, like a really cool line that i don't think a lot of people understood Manovu was never the monitor it was his wife who was and he took that name yeah, after she title, died yeah. i thought that was pretty cool right implying that he's not the monitor that we know from the comics which means maybe we will see the other monitors <laughs> later on maybe they'll get to that point yeah again keeping it easy for television i can appreciate that uh mm -hmm. white canary shockingly ended up having a real arc here which i was surprised about a real damn good arc with her and barry really connecting very much so because you know they don't get to connect that often because obviously they're separated by shows and only really get to hang out in the crossovers for me this was her kind of getting to be taken seriously as a leader to the point where she literally gets a seat at the table at the end of it all and it's like yeah i guess you are the most reliable legend and yeah you have overcome like all this dark stuff that happened to you on the arrow show and you can laugh again but also you know where your strengths lie with uh, the legends and everything mm -hmm. it was good yeah yeah it was is lots of character payoff for her yeah, also, we don't have a Black Canary anymore, so be happy you ended up being the White Canary. <laughs> yeah, she, she's she gone because of of uh, property disputes with the movies, because <laughs> she's in the movies now. <laughs> I like they also gave her a logo and an emblem, which she never had before, for her little chair. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah uh black lightning only gets to be in here really in the in the tail end of the second episode but i think steals a lot of the scenes that he's in yeah oh, he, he's fantastic again like like that show is like like a couple of notches above these other shows in terms of the acting like it's it's proper mm, pro proper good acting and again it's probably because like chris williams is a little older than everyone else so he's like like the dad really absolutely he's got a lot more reps under his belt and he brings a great energy to the table yeah. and you know naturally at the end they they form a justice league and i'm like man i hope we get to see them hanging out at this table more because this ended up being a pretty good justice league lineup it's a pretty stacked lineup very much so you got a couple kryptonians in there some bat people some metahumans it's pretty strong yeah yeah uh, what else happened here that we want to talk about? Uh, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, Bebo! Fucking Bebo came back! Yeah, big Bebo, controlled by Sargon the Sorcerer. Wow, what a nice golden age pull, and I love that he just looks like a shitty Vegas magician. Yeah, and he's just stealing money to buy a timeshare in Bogota. Yeah, which is honestly not that far from the Sargon from the comics anyway, <laughs> so that's pretty fucking dope. <laughs> and they just one-punch him to death. Also, you know, a Heat Wave just being hilarious and him oh, signing man. his romance novel. I'd love a Heat Wave, like, miniseries with just Mick, like, going on adventures, like a book tour. Uh, like, selling, I'm selling his books. I'm genuinely shocked. <laughs> I'm genuinely shocked they haven't pitched that. Let's have the Heat Wave show now. He's too popular. <laughs> Let's spin him off. Maybe that'll be too much for the CW DC universe if they spin him off. Him and Chris Williams, because they were on Prison Break together. That's right. Holy Put them shit. together. <laughs> and, you know, Captain Cold can come in at some point, too, when that <laughs> actor's free. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be fun uh yeah what else uh went on in this one that was really good i mean there's there's just a lot to like about it you know it gave me it gave me the feels there was a lot of hope and just you know very dc comics feelings here the fact that supergirl was super hyped and super excited that batwoman's in this universe now and they can hang out and be uh the world's finest yeah yeah um but yeah well let's talk about that obviously like all the dc shows are now in continuity in the with same one universe another. Or, in, in, or in the same as, universe as it always should have been yeah it's going to be interesting to see black lightning because black lightning is the only show out of all of them that's not filmed in vancouver so like mm, will we see true. will we get to see much of him like i know his show i know his most recent episode that comes out after this is actually dealing with him in the post-crisis world um but yeah it'll interesting. be interesting to see if he actually crosses over more because his his show's filmed him in atlanta yeah, does that mean more supervillains are going to be uh, stumbling through Freeland now? I, I like they worked Weather Witch back in there. It's like, <laughs> who are you? I'm the Weather Witch. <laughs> You're not one of mine. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of places they could go. Yeah, but like going forward, these shows are going to 
it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with all these shows now that they're all in the same universe. I know, like, like some of them won't really change, like Flash and no. Batwoman and and what's left of Arrow are all already in the same show. And Legends was it's more like Supergirl stuff is now in there. So like, this world now has a Superman and a Supergirl and a Lex Luthor who's yeah. like a Nobel Peace Prize winner because he manipulated the universes to make himself look like a good that- guy. <laughs> That I fucking loved so much where it's like, yeah, well, naturally, if everyone who touched the page of Destiny had a hand in rewriting the universe, of course, Lex Luthor <laughs> would rewrite it. So he's the best. And I, I'm totally cool with him playing a little bit of the Super Lex, like for a little bit. Mm. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, because he had a moment there of like, oh, so this is what it's like to be a hero. I like it. It kind of looks like that's what they're doing in the Supergirl show. So a promo for the next episode. And like, obviously everyone thinks he's good, but Supergirl doesn't. And I think Lena Luthor doesn't know he's good either because she still has her memories. So like, I think they're like working against him or something. Like that sounds like a really strong pitch where it's like, yeah, he runs the DEO now. Everyone thinks he's great. Supergirl knows that he isn't. So she has to work to undermine him without looking crazy. Yeah. I think that's a really solid pitch, actually. Man, I'm so behind on, on Supergirl, but, like, the promise of that for a continuation is, like, I want to watch that. I want to catch up on Black Lightning. Well, that's the I thing, mean, like, really, with, when with we, this, you could just start now, really. I, you really could. In fact, I think if, if you know, we got to give Crisis this credit for anything, it's that this really, you know, people who were wondering, like, oh, how long can these shows go on in this form? You know, how long can they keep doing this and i think the answer is if they keep doing stuff like this i think they bought themselves another decade easy with the crisis oh yeah it's like comics like you just do a crisis and you put yourself another decade or two it's literally just like comics and i think it's so cool that tv writing has finally you know taken a page from the comics and you know now that they're able to do this and yeah it's it's a very fascinating time matt i never thought i would live to see this yeah it's it's great undertaking for tv and like movies have never fucking touched crises or anything like that so i'm glad you mentioned movies (laughs) Matt, because there's one very big cameo we need to talk about here. One that i will admit was pretty goddamn unexpected yeah and that's ezra miller as the flash Ezra goddamn Miller shows up in his Justice League costume. I mean, clearly he had enough time to guest on this show because he was very busy not making the Flash movie. So, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm that... sure he. Go go ahead. I said I'm sure he just felt nice to be the Flash in <laughs> something. Finally, <laughs> it is something good, no less. Yeah, yeah, he was actually not annoying and actually acted kind of like how Barry Allen would act, and I liked that. The TV Flash was the one that gave him the idea for the name, the Flash, because he's never That's, called that before. There is not that. enough. No, there is not enough room for the galaxy brain. <laughs> that is that. <laughs> um. But as well, that's, that's a really interesting precedent for his show, for his movie. I mean, um, like, yeah. does that mean like this will get referenced in his movie? Like, like, how is he even there? Like, cause he's, cause the, Barry was after people who were lost, lost in the speed force. So is he lost in the speed force? Is this like how his, his movie opens with him lost in the speed force? Yeah, the chat saying I'm surprised Grant Morrison didn't show up with him. Now he was off in the back making coffee. Coffee you couldn't see him. <laughs> Ooh, what did I miss? Did, did did the two flashes meet up again? Like the flashes of two Earths. <laughs> Aye, that was good. <laughs> Sip, and then they leave. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's funny, too, that this CW universe throws down the gauntlet and says, yes, we are the prime Earth. And I'm like, well, not according to the movie. The movies, they're the prime Earth. But then I'm like, I guess every Earth considers themselves to be the prime Earth. So when you <laughs> say it like that. Well, see, that's the thing at the end, because we get that, that montage that the, the, main, the like, movie universe isn't in there. No, but like every other TV universe is in there, minus Gotham. Yeah, we get we get to see Star Girl. Well, Star, have you seen the trailer, the new trailer for Star Girl? No, I haven't seen Holy the new one yet. Fuck, that looks awesome. We got Solomon Grundy. We got the fucking nice. The whole Justice Society that all look like their comic counterparts. Yes, because that was supposed to be made for the HBO show. So clearly, they pumped some real money into that one, which is why it's allowed to be a slightly different universe. Also, hey, 
We got Dr. Midnight. We got Our Man. It looks like we got a new female version of Wildcat as well. Also, it's on Earth 2, which is the original Justice Society world, which is really damn yeah. awesome. Which, which as which well, is- like speak like makes me wonder what happened to the original earth 2 because the original earth 2 was like where the black canary and all that were from in arrow and um uh with Fla- where what's his name that other flash was from so like yeah, earth 2a they- earth 2b i think they're going to talk about that in the actual arrow finale in the black canary episode It'll be very, very interesting to see them do that. Uh, also, as the chat mentions too, Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern universe. Oh my God, fucking Berlanti, you son yeah, of a bitch! Of course that was because they made that film. <laughs> you son of a bitch, Greg Berlanti. <laughs> you know, I I can't be too mad. I actually thought it was super cool to see that the movie's bad, but they used the good shots from the movie. Yeah. And also, truth be told, if that movie didn't come out and didn't suck, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. That movie launched my <laughs> uh, comic YouTubing career. <laughs> so in turn, the, because that movie came out, this event wouldn't have happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah, true. You know, there but for the grace go I, we're actually very lucky that the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie sucked <laughs> as much as it did. <laughs> yeah, we got to see the Titans world. We got definitely definite confirmation, even though I've known this forever, that Doom Patrol and titans are on different earths yes thank you i'm glad they finally stuck a nail in that coffin yeah. so we can stop talking about yeah, it we saw a swamp thing also rest I, in peace yeah all right i love they even sh- they show the saddest thing of swamp thing and Stephen amell's uh voiceovers like universes rise and they fall yes swamp thing we're talking about you <laughs> yeah oh god that's so sad <laughs> that show was yeah, damn good you- yeah, you, you fell because we checked the wrong box. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and then we get to see the Kingdom Come Superman again, who's got the yellow back in his ass. Yes, and how he does the classic Christopher Reeves thing flying in front of the Earth. Yeah, it was good. Did, didn't that feel so right and so good and just like, ah, all is right with the universe? Yeah. That was that was good shit. Uh, oh, I, I guess the big final uh the big final cameo the big final reference where it's like look we've done all this other stuff we have a you know a justice league headquarters now we have a big table we've done monitors and anti-monitors and crises what could we possibly do next to top that gleek the super monkey yeah gleek and probably the wonder twins i'm so for that (laughs) Yeah, I know, especially because you're really liking that Mark Russell book. Man, it's so nice to see a DC production that's not afraid of super friends in the eras of DC comics, yeah. where it's like, look, man, it all happened. It's all part of the tapestry. Not only that, they even used the super friends theme, like a new remix version of it. They did. They did. I cannot believe they went there. Man, y- y- you got the Hollywood movies that for so long were so afraid to not be taken seriously and so afraid of being silly. Meanwhile, you got this TV show that's just rolling around in it and being like, <laughs> ah, I love comics. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it works as well. It was super damn, so fucking awesome. Yeah. Again, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is my favorite of the crossovers. I still think it's really hard to top that Earth X thing because I think mm-hmm. that really worked as a movie and really worked as one solid mm-hmm. production. This was really good. You know, there's some fat in the middle that I would have trimmed, but really it's all just one giant, you know, love letter fan service piece is what it was. Yeah, it's a culmination of everything that, like, the Arrowverse has done as well as a love letter to like the crises and DC comics and everything. Mm. And it's so weird to think, like I said in my review of it, it's so weird to think that this started back in 2012 with like Arrow. Like remember yeah. that first season of Arrow, how gritty it was? And, and now trying to be a poor man's and, Batman and, begins. And now we have like Oliver Queen is like the specter and he fights the anti-monitor in a quarry mm. and like creates yep. a new universe. <laughs> Hell, the, the president of this world basically just eulogizes uh, Oliver <laughs> Queen, and he's like, you know, uh, he was the best of us. None of this would be made possible if not for him. We're being meta. Do you see how meta we're being? <laughs> we love him so much, and we would love to buy him candy. We love him so much, and we're sorry that he's going to, I don't know, be an actor or be a wrestler or something, but he's going now. <laughs> But keep watching Arrow because we're going to keep that show going. And in fact, they basically say they're going to keep that show going because there's a Green Arrow chair at the Justice League table, meaning that it's going to be filled soon. 
Or... I don't know if it, I think that it'd be good if they keep that empty, and especially because like that um that new show that's meant to be that Green Hour and the Canaries with his daughter that hasn't been picked up for mm. series yet. Yet uh, the has su- it not been? The, yet the Superman series went straight to series. Mm-hmm. And we don't see his uh his daughter again at the end of this. No, she just kind of like disappears. Yeah, she just kind of falls off the face of the earth, huh? I mean, it, did they know it wasn't going to be picked up for series? Is that why she didn't come back? I don't, I don't know, because I know the next episode is the backdoor pilot, that, and then we've got the finale mm-hmm. episode of Arrow. Right. So maybe Which I wonder what the hell that's going to be. Yeah, I, I'm guessing like maybe if it doesn't get picked up, maybe she'll just be like put on the legends or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, legends could have an archer. Yeah. Can you can you crack jokes? Can you crack wise? Can you have yeah. a good time? Or go make her like a uh, oh, make her make like Batwoman like a like a team up show or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a have a sidekick for her. Yeah. Which you know, Batwoman has to do that at some point. Maybe maybe they'll use the original Golden Age Batgirl. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, I think went by Flamebird at some point because mm-hmm. obviously you had Nightwing and Flamebird, so that would make yeah. sense. Hey, now we can have Nightwing in this show because they've got the Superman there. That we can reference the the proper Nightwing, and that that's true. There's so many things you can reference now. Also, Argo is just up there floating in space now, so you can have more aliens. Yeah. And again, yeah, we got that whole Superman show coming down the pipeline. Which, yeah, I mean, you, you would figure they gotta use Luthor for that show, yes. I would imagine, I, although I would imagine that they wouldn't use him like straight away. I imagine no, they, nor they, do I think they should. That we'd build up because I think like because in in this show we get reference to like he doesn't just have one son; he has two sons now. Yes. Okay. You uh, you as the big Superman fan, I really wanted to get your pitch on this. One is obviously John. Naturally, who do mm. we think the other one is? Uh it really could be anyone it could be like their adoptive some chris it could be mm. i don't think they'll do connor because titans has a lock on him that's um, true uh it could although be, multiverse we can do whatever the fuck we want that's true it could be a completely new and original character and i i said i can't remember who i said it to but i said like so we've got what like one named after park and we'd i'd like one that's named after lois's father's so like mm. uh, sam kent or something that would be nice. I would be cool with that. Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of uh, what is it of them having two kids. I think that would be quite interesting, yeah, especially it, you know one original for the show. It's also a callback to what he said originally when um, we first met them in the first episode of the Crisis, where he imagined them on Earth with two children, and then also like mm. um, the Smallville Superman had two children that's right so they were they were signposting it even back then yeah yeah so uh yeah i mean i guess that's basically all we can say about the crisis it was really good i liked it and not only did i like it but i'm actually super excited now for what the rest of uh the dccw universe is going to look like going forward because they basically hit the refresh button in a big way and i i am feeling indeed refreshed yeah, I, I'm looking. I'm definitely going to start watching uh, Black Lightning as well. Now that it actually is tied into these shows, like more than it already was. That was always a bit of a hurdle, wasn't? It? Where it's like, but this, <laughs> it's like this is good, but I feel like he's never going to get to hang out with the rest of the heroes. Now we know he is. Yeah, and now his universe is part of that. So yeah, that's cool. And and from what I understand from my mom, who I mentioned has actually been watching Black <laughs> Lightning on Netflix and texting me about it. Yeah, apparently they've already worked in Markovia. They're doing like a whole Markovian yeah. war storyline and the Outsiders. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess you have to because there's not that much Black Lightning material, but there's more Outsiders material. Yeah, yeah. It, it all seems like a really interesting show. So I'll definitely get into that. And yeah, all the other shows I've already watched. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do totally 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 uh you know we're not quite at an hour 30 yet which we normally do for the show so let's do something we haven't done to thank all the fans for coming and joining us on a saturday night uh let's take some questions uh from the chat everyone yeah let's let's we haven't done this in a bit i always wanted to make this a thing and hey if you want to give questions to the chat be sure to follow matt and myself on twitter (laughs) so you know when we go live yeah yeah Ah, you actually have comic multiverse question time. Nice. I had that ready. 
Matt Matt surprises me every day, everyone. <laughs> this is this is the best thing about working with Matt. Uh, you hyped for the finale of BoJack Horseman? Yes, yes, I am. I am hyped for it, and I am sad to see it go, and I'm even sadder because I don't think that show will have a happy ending. I think the BoJack Horseman story can only end in abject misery. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, I'm way, way behind on this show, but yeah, it's not going to end happy. No, because that's been the moral of this story. You know, happiness is fleeting. <laughs> Bojack must defeat the demon that is himself. And everyone's like, isn't that the funny horse show? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> and it is a funny horse show. And it's existentially depressing at the same time. <laughs> Wrap your head around that, everybody. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, anyone else with anything else to say? Uh, oh, I guess there's going to be an Aquaman show and there's going to be a Green uh, Lantern show Ow. on... Uh, I'll hold my breath for those. <laughs> As we've seen before, you can announce animation takes a long time and is expensive. You can announce it, but they don't always make it. No. Trust me, I would love an Aquaman show. I think there's so much material you could mine for a cartoon there, and I would definitely love uh, a Green Lantern show because mm -hmm. I loved the last one that got killed on the vine. Yeah. Uh, Lude Skeletor asking about Better Call Saul. I actually stopped watching Better Call Saul like I'm, very early on. I'm excited for season five. Hank Schrader is coming back. Ooh, I, I was shocked because I'm like, man, I don't think this show will make it. I don't think, you know, Breaking Bad Mania will maintain five seasons. Fuck me. I was wrong. Yeah, and it's it's finishing on its sixth season as well. So it's going out on its own terms. Yeah, that's good. Jaden Devil May Cry 3 on Nintendo Switch having a style switch during gameplay. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of good old games on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Call of Juarez Gunslinger, which mm. I hadn't bought yet, but I next time I have a trip, I totally am because I'm going to love the idea of carrying that around. Yeah, that was a damn good game. They need to make another it really Call of Juarez game like that. Not like that, they... that one that came out after it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, the cartel. That one sucked. Yeah. Uh, because of the rumors of inclusion of MCU Spider-Man 3, who would you cast as Craven? I think I've said this before. I would actually cast, like, Liev Shriver as Craven. He'd be pretty good. I saw someone pitch uh, Javier Bardem, and I thought, yes, mm -hmm. that'd be really damn good. Got the voice down. He'd be good. Uh, what about uh, Charto Copley? He's a South African, and we can see that he can get, like, uh, all really jacked buff, up yeah. for roles. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to like see that. Yeah, like an Elysium and shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I would cast Charto Copley as a uh, craven the hunter i know he's russian but he's also like a white russian south african <laughs> so that might be fun uh did you oh yeah again when you've asked that like four times and i kept saying that's not a todd phillips joke that's just an asshole joke yeah that wasn't directed at him that was directed at anyone who says that that same episode had a joke where the legion of doom says to harley oh we stand for the national anthem here <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny ass show, that Harley Quinn show. That it show is. is good. Oh, Tamar, what do you guys think of Event Leviathan 2 being a thing in the April solicit? Isn't it a third thing? Because there was Event Leviathan 2, and then there's Event well, Leviathan Checkmate. Isn't it getting a we, sequel to a sequel? We haven't heard about that that thing that was teased at the end of Event Leviathan. We haven't heard anything about this, and then this new one came out, so it made me think, like, oh, are they just, like, rolling it into this? <laughs> is this what it is now? I, I don't, guess. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to review yeah, it, you know, because it's got Green Arrow in it. Um, I'm a star you're for right, Green, a Green Arrow uh, Arrow stuff at the moment, so yeah. You, man, man, you got I didn't even think about that, but you're totally right. If you want to read Green Arrow in something, you got to read fucking Event Leviathan <laughs> Checkmate 2 Event -a Yeah, Something that, like, no. Bendis is the only one he seems to really give a shit about. Uh, you know, because the first one was so great and the build-up for it was so great. <laughs> yes, How the, can you go the three, wrong? The, the, four, the five of the six issues that was just spinning its wheels into a reveal that mm -hmm. everyone already knew beforehand. Uh, Jaden saying the rumored Batman Arkham game. Which Batman are you? mean the one that's been rumored for what feels like a million <laughs> so, years e now? E every games conference lead up to it. Oh, there's a new Batman game coming out. It's going to get announced here. Every YouTube scooper always says that and it never pans out. Yep, yeah, not, not until I see a trailer. Yeah, well, even then I'll be like, oh, when's this going to get delayed or cancelled? Mm-hmm. 
uh, Jersey like what 80th anniversary one shot are you excited to treat begrudgingly the Robin one I think we talked about this last <laughs> week I think they actually got together a pretty good killers row of Robin talent yeah yeah uh, how do you feel about Cavill potentially being in the Black Adam movie again I'll believe it when I see it yeah I think he's done playing Superman yeah <laughs> spider gamer yeah the art next arkham game rumor every year since arkham knight it's came true. out agreed or even before then even before arkham knight came out there were rumors of another game coming out the year after or something mm -hmm. uh cyborg soldier which uh writer do you find to be the most underrated and what is their best book i'll uh, we'll, we'll make this the last one because i think this is a meaty topic uh I, of course, uh, what is it, have been waving a flag for Jerry Duggan for a long time. I know mm -hmm. he's not like a big celebrity writer. He never gets the big teams, but always does great work on what they do give him. Yeah, I, I would say, in my opinion, it'd be Mark Russell. Mm, definitely. Because he's always given like these fringe books like Prez and uh, Wonder Twins. And, uh, and he's got a new book coming out called Billionaire Island, which apparently is going to be adapting some of his old Prez ideas that he didn't get to do. Ooh, well, then you've sold me <laughs> on that. Um, yeah, he just does like... Motherfucker, that's all you had to say. Yeah, he just he just does like books that like he likes and he's really damn good at them. He's also very funny, which is a hard yeah. thing to come by in the comic book industry. True, like, laugh out loud knee slap in comedy and, and he understands uh like characters like batman and superman because they always appear in wonder twins and they're written so beautifully indeed indeed and heck he can even write stuff like those riddler one shots that are really good and those sinestro one shots yeah. that are surprisingly good yeah yeah Alrighty then, everyone. I guess with that, we'll start winding the show down. We didn't talk about what we read this week, but there wasn't much this week. Honestly, no. there was Iron Man 2020. Matt and I both enjoyed it. Yeah, there there really was. I think next week is a bit bigger, but yeah, the last couple of weeks haven't been yeah. that big, which has been good since I've been able to catch up. Likewise, again, I got that Batman Universe video done. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. I'm really <laughs> happy with how it turned out, especially the thumbnail. Uh, if you're a patron, naturally, you'll get to listen to the audio version of this before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month, uh, $5 if you want the video version the day before. Because, <laughs> you know, got to gotta upsell, got to do the hard sell. Uh, everyone else, you can listen to the show Wednesday, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got the show over on SoundCloud. We got it over on iTunes. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening. We, we always appreciate it. Thank you for making Matt and myself part of your schedule means the world to us that we get to do this for you and we'll get to do it again for you next week yeah bye everyone